hormonal disturbances, which could affect uh, their fertility. Uh, so I'm very interested in the impact of fertility, and a lot of, uh, I wrote a lot of articles on the impact of fertility on uh, infertile women, and mm -hmm. we usually try to help them to lose weight, not because just of, uh, for the fertility, because it also affects their general health. Mm -hmm. uh, obesity has a very bad effect on their health. Uh, it affects the yes, moods and activities of the person. It could affect their blood pressure. It could increase their chances of developing diabetes. Mm -hmm. They could have a lot of problems on the page. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about keys to your success. Okay. What were they? Um, there's a very interesting book that I've read. Uh, two interesting books that I think that have changed the way of uh, my way of thinking. One of them is a very famous book called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Mm -hmm. It was wrote, written by Stephen R. Covey. Mm -hmm. And another book called The Secret. Um, one of the, the author? Uh, I can't remember the author mm -hmm. right now. Wha uh, the messages that were very strong in these books was that you really have to, every person has to have a mission, mm -hmm. a mission statement. Mm -hmm. Uh, every successful institution, the first thing that you'll find when you go in through the, this firm or this organization, you'll find a very clear mission statement, mm -hmm. defining who they are, mm -hmm. what they do, their what goals. are their aims, and everything. So every person should have a mission statement. Our main mission in life, do you know what our main mission in life is? No. Well, of course, the to worship God. So our main mission in life is to worship God and to try to obey God in everything that we do. Mm. And this, under this mission, mm. is trying to b b uh, become the best person you ca that you can on a moral level and on a professional level. On a professional level, you have to your aim, your main aim as a clinician is to try to deliver the best quality service to your patients, mm. the most up-to-date mm. service. So you have to put um, certain goals in your life. Mm -hmm. And when you put these goals, you have to, these goals have to have certain criteria. Mm -hmm. First of all, these goals have to be achievable. You can achieve these goals. Second of all, you have to uh, put these goals onto two categories, mm -hmm. short-term goals and long-term goals. There is no medium term? I, I like to define them this way. It's much simpler for me. <laughs> the short-term goals, they have to be achievable. And they, uh, the, uh, these goals you can achieve in a relatively short period of time. Mm -hmm. The long-term goals, they can be achieved over a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the, uh, the year, the term, whatever, you have to start revising yourself mm -hmm. and see how much you have achieved of these goals. Okay. This is very important f uh, for every person to start uh, mm -hmm. dealing with his life in this uh, very simple way. Uh, despite the heavy duty of your career, of course, you have a special viewpoint on sports. Tell us of more course. about that. Uh, sports is a very important part of my life. I, I, I dedicate a lot of time for you uh, for sports. Sports can give. And what do you say to our viewers about sports and sports how to uh, blend it to their yes, daily activities? Yes, um, you have to blend sports in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, sports uh, not is it just good for your cardiovascular system mm -hmm. and for oxygenation of the various organs. It mm -hmm. also pr uh, provides you with a hormone called endorphin. When you start to uh, play sports and roll yourself in sports. Not only, for the not only football for the not only football there's the various sports i used to play uh, swimming mm. uh, karate and basketball and uh, we i go to the gym regularly this is important this endorphin hormone is an antidepressant hormone mm. it makes you in a good mood mm. and it uh, it helps your thinking it makes you more balanced more focused mm. it helps you with your professional life as well it helps you to interact with other people when you play team sports this helps you with uh, interacting with, mm, with people community. around you, social mm. community. And uh, this is something that w sometimes we are lacking in Egypt. We don't have this teamwork and, and mm. everyone is working on his own, a one-man show as you can. Culture. So teaming up or if, if you are t uh, raised up uh, in a way that encourages you to uh, employ in a team attitude, mm. later on when you start your professional career, you always think in these terms, to work as a team. And working as a team, is what caused a lot of countries to develop and become more developed. Mm. Okay, that takes me to ask you about those people who inspired you. Um, uh, first of all, the, the uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is the, so on our inspiration, all of us yes. as Muslims. 
Uh, my mother and father, they had a very important role in my life. Who comes first, your mother or father? <laughs> the your mother, mother and father. <laughs> 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 uh, mm. They have uh, put a lot of work and dedication in raising me and my uh, brothers and, uh, and sisters. Um, they provide it's usually said that boys are affected much more with the mothers of than Of course, the because the mother, naturally, she, mm. stay, she uh, uh, has a lot more time to spend with her mm. children. Yeah. And she puts a lot of disciplines in, in her boys. children mm -hmm. that really you start to realize later, later in life. But my mother and father they had a very important role in my life. I thank them يعني, all the time mm -hmm. for providing me with everything that I uh, required. Uh, the other person that really had an impact on my life was uh, is, uh, my aunt. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a very respectable uh, uh, professional in the field of gynecology and obstetrics. And she really had a very strong impact on me, on teaching me uh, the, uh, skills. And, and here we're sending them all your thanks. Yes, um, I thank them very, very much mm -hmm. for all their help during the years. Okay. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about ultrasounds. You have a special uh, contribution using 3D and 4D. Tell us a little yes. bit about the difference between both Okay. Of them. One of the questions that a lot of patients ask is, what's the difference between 2D, uh, 3D, and 4D ultrasounds? What's the difference? Mm -hmm. Okay, the difference is very quite simple. In 2D, you're only working in two dimensions. Mm -hmm. That means the depth or the volume is mm -hmm. not applicable, mm -hmm. which is very important in uh, cases of obstetrics and gynecology. In 3D, they've developed a system. We're quite acquainted with 3D, but 4D? It's, it's I will explain to you what's the difference mm -hmm. between 3D and 4D. Mm -hmm. In 3D, it's a static image. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a static okay. image, it does not move. In 4D, so you're... So, yeah, I know it, but uh, we can explain it yes, for the viewers. Uh, it, it, that means we're seeing the volume, mm -hmm. but in a static motion, that means it's still. The image mm -hmm. is still. In 4D, we're getting the volume, but at the same time, we have the advantage of having the movement, a live movement at mm -hmm. the same time. Mm -hmm. So you can see the baby waving for you, the ba baby yawning, the baby's movement, yeah. which is very uh, important sometimes mm -hmm. in some uh, ah. diseases. Mm -hmm. And then what's 4D? This is this the 4D, is yes. Live motion, 3D, mm -hmm. which is 4D. Now there is a, a newer technology that is developing, is 4D high definition. Mm -hmm. You see the baby high definition as if you're seeing the real, uh, the real image. And uh, this is very compelling for us. This is a very important branch in obstetrics. Mm -hmm. And a lot of women think that this is only important in obstetrics, mm -hmm. to see their baby. It mm -hmm. also comes, it's also important in uh, gynecology especially in cases of infertility. It's very important to visualize the uterus, which is the womb or the place where the baby is going to be developing. Mm -hmm. And you can see the uterus and you see make sure that you don't have any uh, problems or focal lesions inside the uterus that could affect the woman. Uh, you can also see tumors uh, such as ovarian cancers to make sure that you don't have any kind of lesions that might develop uh, for the woman. Mm -hmm. What's this place that we are in today? Special center. Tell us more about the place and the activities uh, taking place here. This is the Center of Ag Excellence. And it's uh, mission attributed to the National Research Center. Mm. Uh, it has a very good mission. Uh, the mission of this center is to provide high medical quality services to the general population mm. at very affordable prices so that you don't overburden the poor patients or the, uh, the, yani the patients that uh, do not have mm. enough money to come here to get the latest quality, uh, best medical quality service, mm -hmm. to, uh, to have a service where you uh, are treated with dignity. And this is very, very important. Uh, it's, uh, and also, <coughs> one of the missions of this institution is to, pro uh, to provide research in the medical, uh, in the medical field. Uh, research that will help not just the Egyptian population, but all over mm -hmm. the world. Okay. Uh, you attended the scientific meeting on economic solutions for national problems. Give us some information on that. This is very important. And what should it be about national problems? Okay. Yeah. When we're thinking about uh, something national or something on a wide scale of the population, mm -hmm. you have to think also economically or economics. Economics comes into everything. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very easy to provide the highest quality medical service, but sometimes it comes at a high price. If it has a very high price or a very high budget, mm -hmm. you will not be able to apply this on a larger field of the population. Mm -hmm. In order to provide a, a decent service to a wider amount of population, you have to have a service that is also economic, meaning economically feasible. So you have to also always think about something called cost-benefit. 
it's very important. One of the uh, very common uh, cancers in women is breast cancer. So we have to find mm -hmm. a, a way or a solution it's, uh, that is formulated for Egyptian women mm -hmm. to prevent the incidence of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Women have to have an education to learn how to examine their cells and when to go to the doctor and what's the alarming signs and mm -hmm. symptoms that they should feel before, uh, that should uh, imp imply them or urge them mm -hmm. to go see a clinician for this lesion. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, uterine cancer. Mm -hmm. is a very co uh, it is the second most common cancer mm -hmm. in, in uh, gynecology. Mm -hmm. Also, there are screening programs to prevent uh, cancer, uh, uterine cancer, mm -hmm. and also cancer cervix. It is less common in Egypt and the Middle East. Mm -hmm. So also, we have a screening program for uh, cervical cancer. If you can apply these screening programs, mm -hmm. you can try to prevent the incidence of the disease, mm -hmm. and this is going to help. And this is going to be a more economic for the, uh, for the state. Mm -hmm. It's much easier to prevent the disease than try mm -hmm. to spend lots of money and employ a lot of resources in treating the disease. Okay. What about the ICSI, which is the intra... Intracytoplasmic sperm injection. Okay. <laughs> ICSI. Yeah. Uh, and what's your contribution to this field? Okay, uh, ICSI was uh, developed in the world in 1973. The mm -hmm. first baby that was born to IVF was called Louise Brown. Mm -hmm. And ever since the, that time, the whole world French? has been... Uh, no, it was in uh, England. Mm -hmm. uh, and the whole world has been compelled mm -hmm. by the, uh, the field of uh, assisted reproduction or IVF. Mm -hmm. it is a very uh, it's a procedure <laughs> by which we uh, stimulate the ovary. Mm -hmm. And when we stimulate the ovary, we go into a very fine catheter, mm -hmm. and we start to uh, retrieve the oocytes, okay? And then we inject the sperms inside these oocytes. They start to develop into embryos, mm -hmm. and then we reinsert the embryos into the woman. It has a pregnancy rate of about mm -hmm. uh, 50%. This is all over the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it provides a very meaningful way to help the patients that, are, that have the problem of infertility. Uh, it was very compelling for me to not just learn the ICSI, but also to uh, keep up to date with all the latest research mm. developed in this field. I'm also um, contributing to research into this field. We, we do a lot of research here in the National Research Center in which we try to uh, improve the pregnancy rate, mm. in which we uh, try to ease the, 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 the problems of the patient uh, we try to develop innovative ways to um, improve the success rate of uh, intracytoplasmic sperm injection mm -hmm. or ICSI. Finally, before we go, what is it that you dream of? I dream, uh, I have a, na a national dream of Egypt. I really wish of and I hope, <laughs> <laughs> and I hope that we uh, overcome our obstacles mm -hmm. and we see Egypt as a developed country mm -hmm. uh, and we see Egypt on the right track on the, uh, the come over these hardships. Come over the hardships that we are facing uh, in these uh, tough times, mm. and I wish that uh, we ha we uh, improve the medical services in Egypt. Mm. We provide the ha the up most up to date technology in treating our patients. Okay, thank you very much for joining You're us. You're welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.